Hey there, Booksy. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday morning, August 29th. I think it is. This is the start of my reading vlog number five for August. In the beginning of the month, I announced that I was going to try to read 31 books in 31 days. And it might have been the worst possible month for me to make that goal for myself because in the middle of the month, I had a camping trip that took a while to prepare and plan for and execute and recover from. So there were almost two weeks where I didn't get any or any significant amount of reading done. And I've been trying to catch up ever since then. It's impossible for me to read 31 books at this point, but I'm still going for the highest number that I can. So in this reading vlog, I'm gonna be trying to read an insane amount and popping in here every now and then to tell you about how it's going. I'm also doing the Women in Translation Readathon. These are the last few days in the month and I'm trying to read books that were written by women in other languages and translated to English. Some of them may be translated by females, some of them not. But in any case, I'm trying to read Women in Translation along with all the other books that I had put on my TBR. So stay tuned for the rest of this vlog. I hope you find it interesting. The first book that I'm gonna be starting off today with well, I already started this book sometime, but I need to finish it. This is Graham Swift's Last Orders. This is his Booker Prize winning novel. This is a 1996 Booker Prize winning book. And as you know, I also have a challenge to read all the books that won the Booker Prize in this year. That goal, I'm also really far behind on. So more on this as the vlog continues, as these series of vlogs continue. So stay tuned for my reading, my life, my everything. Thank you so much for being here. Keep on watching. Attention everyone. What is that show trying to money on one and four only? I'm on my way home and I thought I'd be done with this book by now but instead I'm only at about page 100 which means that when I get home I'm gonna have to spend some time just reading so I can finish this book and maybe finish my other book that I'm reading right now which is my Woman in Translation read but this one is set in London. It's about a man named Jack Dodds who's a butcher and he's died just before the opening of the novel and asked for his remains to be cremated and the ashes scattered. And most of what we're reading now are flashbacks into the relationship between Jack Dodds and these friends who are about to scatter his ashes as well as moving back into the present time where they're on the trip to go do the scattering. The book is really a character study of the relationships between all these people and <laughs> some of it seems like incestuous relationships, although they're not related, but they seem to have grown up in very close quarters. And I don't know too much about the plot, but this is definitely a character study. What I just told you is what the synopsis said, and I don't know how much more I should tell you because I don't want to spoil the rest of the story, so I'll reserve saying anything else until when I'm done. Hopefully, that will be this evening. But for now, heading home, we stop to get some supplies, and then home, dinner, hanging out, etc. All done but I don't have time to talk about this right now so we're gonna get to the next book and then we'll talk about them all at the end 
I'm reading Kan Shu's Love of the New Millennium. This is translated from the Chinese by Annalise Finnegan Wasmolen. I'm reading this because of Women in Translation Month. And this is a collection of 11 stories that each illustrate some part of relationships in China. First story is Quilan and Weibo. It goes from page 3 to page 44. And Quilan, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these names correctly. Quilan is widowed. The widow knew Quilan. She has been widowed and she's decided not to remarry. She's been taking boyfriends. And in this story, this is one of the men that she has dalliances with and she falls in love with him in some way but their relationship is not satisfying her so she contemplates becoming a prostitute at this hot spring spa that she visits it says they had met actually at the hot spring spa that offered sex among its services and the entire story is a little bit of back and forth between the additional people that are in both of these people's lives there's some magical realism when she visits her family and she communes with the dead and they speak about also knowing this man that she's involved with other than relationships i'm not sure what theme is being explored here the story has this kind of ethereal quality to it that even when we're following conversations between two people we're not really sure what is being discussed and what plane they're operating on. But that was the first story, so let's read the second story and see if it's any clearer. Hey there, Booty, welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, August 30th. I usually post a Friday Reads video on Fridays, but this week I won't. So this is vegetarian chicken and broccoli. So I just wanted to blanch the broccoli before I stirred it. So it doesn't get all mushy. I'm doing this for a potluck at church. I am not vegetarian, but I frequently get asked to make vegetarian meals. And I'm gonna put the camera down now so that I can use my two hands. <laughs> this is it. Vegan chicken and broccoli. And then our niece came to visit, and so all other reading, all other activities stopped. I'm lying down because I need to rest from my accomplishment. I finally finished reading A House for Mr. Bizwas by V.S. Naipaul. I read this book for almost the entire month. And in looking at the Goodreads reviews, one of the major criticisms of this book is that it has no plot. And I can't say that I completely disagree with that statement because it's more of a character study. The study of the character of Mr. Bizwas who is the son of Indian immigrants living in the West Indies, is living in Trinidad. And we meet his family even before Biswas is born. And we flash forward to knowing that he's gonna die as a young enough man. And then we live his life with him through these 600 plus pages. And it is a really interesting look at this life that's lived, this man's hesitations, his dreams, the ambitions that he has that are just clouded by his life and his circumstances, and a lot of his frustrations at what life deals him and how he lives it. The fact that he likes a girl, is attracted to her, and suddenly finds himself married to her and they birth four children without there seeming to be a lot of intimacy between the man and his wife and how he deals with the family and the various houses that are represented in the title and how that is displayed throughout the book it's a fantastic read it's not an easy one it's not a book to be read in one or two days it's not a book to rush through you kind of have to spend the time with mr biswas's character and allow yourself to feel the frustrations of the life that he lives and know that the life that Naipaul is describing here is a real one. It's based on his father and the young boy in the story is based on Naipaul himself. And I'm so happy that I finally read it. And so now I'm gonna take a little nap because I wanna read one more book before the end of the month and I need to relax after finishing this one. I think this is a major accomplishment for me. I've wanted to read it for a really long time. And now that I have, 
I'm gonna rest. I think this is the book that I'm going to be ending my August reading with. I don't think I have it in me to finish another book before the end of the month. So I'm gonna reel my ambitions in. And I was just saying to Doris that maybe we'll continue this 30 in 30 in September. So I'm gonna try to finish this one between today and tomorrow. And that will be the end of my reading, I think. Let's see if I can even finish this book. It is over 200 pages and the writing is not, it's just not really easy to read. I finished Love in the New Millennium and this one was a little bit difficult to read. So this is the end of my reading month, end of my reading vlog for August, end of everything August related. I didn't meet my 31 in 31 reading goals, but reading this book alone, I think qualifies for like multiple books because it was difficult to read subject matter writing style the connection between the characters all of it there's a lot of delusions and hallucinations and what seems like magical realism in this book and the exploration of what is real and what isn't the use of language like prostitution and men calling women whores um, it's a little distasteful to read but I read it for the cultural expose I suppose I don't know how much more I know about China or their relationships that they're having in this present time from reading this book because I don't know how much this is representative of any kind of wide-scale part of society but I read this book I'm happy that I read it and so this is the end of my reading month this was another book for women in translation so I met two of the prompts this one was to read a book where the author and the translator are credited on the cover and what else did I read I mean I read a few books for women in translation month and in any case <laughs> this is the end of my reading vlog so whatever challenges I met or didn't meet this over thanks for watching this video thanks for watching all the videos that I posted in August this is also the end of Veda so we'll be back for September videos soon maybe tomorrow thanks for watching hope you have a great night give me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe if you want to see more let's talk in the comments i'd love to hear how your august reading went what was the best book that you read in august for me my best book i think was vs Naipaul's house for mr biz was just maybe because of the length <laughs> it's a book that i really enjoyed i'm happy that i read it so love to hear from you how your reading was so let's talk in the comments and until next time happy reading bye